One of the things that makes Excel stand apart from other reporting tools is its immense flexibility. With some tinkering, you can make charts and graphics that don't look anything like Excel. In this post, I'm going to take you through the steps to create this dot map chart. Now there's no built-in dot map chart, but don't worry, it's easier than it might appear. This data is going to form the basis of what I want to visualize in my dot map. It's sales data grouped by segment and market, and the markets relate to regions in Africa, Asia Pacific, Europe, Latin America, and USA and Canada. The first thing I want to do is control T, which is a keyboard shortcut to format the data in an Excel table. And you'll see why this is important later in the video. If we look at the table design tab, we can see the table name is table two. Next, I want to summarize it with a pivot table and I've already got a worksheet set up where I'm going to place the pivot table. So I want it there. And in the field list, I just want the sales and it's summarized by market. Let's right click and apply some number formatting. This is going to feed through to my chart. Now Excel can't visualize this data in its built-in map chart. It doesn't recognize those regions. So I'm going to make my own map chart and I found an image of a dot map on pngwing.com. I'm just going to insert it. It's saved on my PC. There it is there. If you want to grab a copy of this image, you can download the file that's linked to in the video description. Now I'm going to set my dimensions to 11.48 high because I know this works with my coordinates that I've already figured out, but you can size it to whatever suits you. Just be sure to choose the size before you move on and don't distort it too much. Next, I want to use the color tool and I'm going to recolor it to just this gray accent color three light. The black dots are just a bit too harsh. Now I need to overlay the dot map chart image with a scatter chart. And for that, I need some X, Y coordinates. So I've got a little table here ready to go. It doesn't matter what you put in here to start with. It's just so that you have something to insert the chart on. So any numbers between one and 100 will do. So we'll select the data and then insert, and we want this scatter chart here. So you can see I've got three dots based on these coordinates. Now I don't need the chart title, so let's turn that off. And I need to format the axis. So with it selected, control one, and the formatting pane opens. And in here, I want to set the maximum to 100 and the major unit to two. And then I want to repeat that for the horizontal axis. So I want 100 and the major unit is two. And that just gives me a nice grid that I can use to figure out what the coordinates are of each of the dots. So we need to resize this chart to sit over top of the dot map. And to allow us to see through, we're going to format the chart with no fill. Now in order to line it up with the dot map, I need an outline to that image. It doesn't have one. So I'm just going to give it a temporary outline. It doesn't matter what color, we'll just give it a blue outline. So now I can see my dot map. I can left click and drag my scatter chart so that the plot area matches the blue line of the chart behind. Just line it up by eye. Okay, that will do. Now I can use the coordinates on the scatter chart to match up the dots in the chart. I'm going to delete the data I have in here and we'll add in some new values. So starting with the Asia Pacific, I want a dot at 88.5 and one at 51.3. Now the axis has readjusted its starting point. So it's currently 86. So the dot isn't quite in the right position. Let's go and change that so you can see the effect. We'll make the minimum zero. So now you can see my dot is over here in Asia Pacific and it lines up with the dot in the dot map image below the scatter chart. All you need to do now is repeat this process until you have enough dots. If you can't see it clearly enough, you can zoom in to make it easier. The number of coordinates you enter here will be dictated by the number of dots you want for each region. Now I've got between six and 10 dots, depending on the size of the region. I'm going to paste in the coordinates I prepared earlier, so you don't need to sit through watching me figure them all out, but it probably took me half an hour or so to calculate them all, so it's not too laborious. So you can see I have multiple coordinates for each region, and I've labeled them with the region names, and you'll see why that's important in a moment. The other thing I need to do is resize the ranges so that it includes all of the dots. Let's just zoom back out. 
and I'll left click and drag to include all of the regions. Now I can turn off the grid lines because they're no longer required. So let's do that. And I'm going to edit my dot format. Just select one of them, control one to open the formatting pane and under the paint bucket and marker. Let's just make this a little bigger. I can change the fill color. So let's make it a really bright blue and the same for the border, bright blue. And I'm just going to increase the width of the border to 1.25. I'm going to add a shape to the background. So let's insert a shape and I want this one here with the rounded corners. And I'm just going to size it the same as the map behind. Let's change the radius on that. And I'm going to make it dark shade of gray. And we'll get rid of the outline. We don't need that. And we'll send it to the back so it sits behind the chart. Now, in order to hide the axis labels, you could turn the axis labels off, but if you do that, the chart will resize and then all your dots will be in the wrong place. So I find it easier just to color them the same color as the background. And that's that color. And let's repeat it for the horizontal axis. So now we can't see the axis. We can still see the chart border. We don't need that anymore. So selecting one of the images on the formatting pane, I'm going to open the selection pane. Let's drag it out and that's just going to allow me to select the map because it's currently sandwiched between the rounded corner rectangle in the background and the scatter chart on the top. So let's go to the picture format and we no longer need the border on that. I also don't need a border on my chart. So let's do that. We'll get rid of that outline. And I don't need these vertical and horizontal axis lines. So let's go and get rid of those. No line for that one and no line for that one. Okay, it's starting to come together. Now I want some shapes to store the values from my pivot table. So I'll insert another shape. And again, I'm going to use these rounded corner shapes. I'm just going to draw them in. I can set the fill colors. For example, I could use this gradient fill. Let's set it going left to right, so dark to light. And perhaps we'll use a shade similar to the background. Actually, this one's redundant. We'll get rid of that and we'll just make it like that. This I might make a shade of gray as well, just so it's not so harsh with the white. And we'll get rid of the border so that it's no line. Okay, so that's the placeholder for my value labels. With it selected, I'm just going to put in equals and then this is USA and Canada. So it's this value here. Now a shape cannot take a formula and that's what's returned when you click on a cell in a pivot table. So what I actually want is just the cell reference. So USA and Canada is in cell B8. Press enter. We can make it a bit bigger and format the font white so that it's easy to read and center it in the label. We also need a label to tell us what region this is. So let's insert a text box underneath and we'll just type in the label and let's center that. Now this text box, I don't want any formatting, so I don't want any fill and no outline. Let's make the font white so it's easy to see. And we'll just line these two up. So shape, format, line, center. So that's our first label. And we need to just replicate it for the other regions. So with them selected, holding down shift to select them both. I'm just going to hold down control and left click and drag. So that will be Latin America. This will be Africa. We need one for Europe and Asia Pacific. So all we need to do is edit the formula here. So it's currently picking up cell B8, but this is Latin America, so it's B7. We need to change the label and rinse and repeat for the other shapes. Now you notice that the formatting has been lost when I edited those formulas. So just selecting one of them, I'm going to double click the format painter and then paint the formatting onto the other shapes. So there's my dot map chart, but 
Wouldn't it be nice to highlight the region with the largest values to draw attention and make it quicker to interpret? Now I can use the max function to find the highest value. So let's just select all the objects, control A to select them all. I'm going to move them across so I've got some space and I'll unhide these columns where I've got my placeholders for the maximum region and their coordinates. So finding the maximum of the sales and then I need to find which region relates to that max value. So I'm looking up the maximum in the sales and returning the market. If you don't have XLOOKUP, you can use index and match. So now I know what the maximum is and what region that relates to. I need to find all the XY coordinates for that region. And in Excel 2021 or 365 or later, we have the filter function. So I can filter this array. So I want both the X and Y values to include where the region equals the region returned by XLOOKUP. Close parentheses and filter spills. Now, if you don't have the filter function, you'll find an alternate array formula solution in the file that's available to download in the video description. So now I have these coordinates, I can use them to add another series to my scatter chart. So with the chart selected, right click, select data, and then I'm going to add a series. This series is just going to be my max series. The X values are here and the Y values are here. Now, if you have some regions that have more X, Y coordinates than others, then just make sure you select more cells to allow for them. Click OK. And while we're here, let's just edit this one. So this one's series name isn't Y. It's actually all regions. Not that it matters too much. We don't see it anywhere, but just for completeness, we'll name them appropriately. I'll click OK. And you can see I've now got orange dots in Asia Pacific. So let's go ahead and select those dots. They're sitting on top of the blue dots. You can see the blue dot behind, and that's because the orange dot is smaller. So let's first of all change the color. I'm gonna go with this bright pink, and it doesn't matter what color you choose, just make sure it's something that stands out and contrasts. Let's make the outline bigger so that it covers the blue dot. So now we have the maximum highlighted. Let's make it interactive and we'll add a slicer for the market. So with the pivot table selected on the analyze tab, I'm going to insert a slicer and I want it for the segment. I'll click OK. So we have three segments. As I choose a segment in the slicer, it's going to filter the values in the pivot table, which feed through to the labels in my dot chart. And depending on the segment I choose, the maximum could be different. So here, for corporate, the maximum segment is Europe. For home office, it's USA and Canada. And for consumer, it's Asia Pacific. So now we have ourselves a nice interactive dot map chart. The icing on the cake is to make the slicer match the background and sit it on the chart. So I'm going to right click and go into slicer settings. And here I'm going to turn off the header. We're going to give it three columns. And let's make it a bit wider so they have space. And I'm going to color it the same as my background. So let's pop it on the chart. Now I've created a custom style for my slicer so it matches my chart. And I'll put a link in the video description to a video that covers custom slicer styles. So I'll select this style here, which I created earlier. And I can make the buttons just a little smaller. And then they look like sheet tabs. So as I click on them, it updates and it looks like it belongs as part of the chart. Now, because I stored the source data in an Excel table, if I want to update this chart, all I need to do is grab my new data, which I happen to have here, some data for December 2022, and go back to my table that's feeding my chart. And on the very next row, Control-V to paste in my new data. You can see the table has grown to incorporate that new data. And then if I go back to my chart sheet, and go to the data tab and refresh all. If you keep your eye on the chart, you'll see the value labels update. So there we go. I've updated my chart with one click. I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.